Hey, hey everyone. Welcome. My name is Ryan Stokes. Um, I'm from Southwest Missouri and uh, I'm here with you. It's a little cold. I got my stocking hat on. Um, it's cold, right? So uh, I'm trying to stay warm, uh, but I'm super excited for tonight. Tonight's going to be fun. Um, it's going to be very informative. We've it's been a while since we've done this. Um, I don't think we've really focused on on a specific issue. Gosh, Dr. Thornton, I, it could have been, it could be six, eight, nine months. So um, we have a lot of new people on. They have not been a part of this. Um, and so we're going to go through and uh, just really give Dr. Thornton the floor and let him go. But before we do that, um, I just want to welcome everyone. Thank you all for hopping on. I appreciate it. Um, I hope uh, you get everything that you want out of this. I hope you invited some people. I hope they get an opportunity. And uh, we're going to talk about what um, really just we talked about natural solutions, but our focus is going to be on curcumin, right? Turmeric and curcumin. And so um, we're going to have time for Q&A at the end. If you have some questions, you can always drop those in the chat. I'll keep track of those and I'll feed those to Dr. Thornton as he goes. Um, but if you want to wait and ask, um, just if it's too much, to type, just hold on. All right. You, you let Dr. Thornton get through his stuff and um, we will have time for Q&A and give you a chance to have all your questions answered. This is also recorded. So once this is done recording, if you want to see it, we will post this in our group, Disruptive Wellness. We'll also post it online on our YouTube channel, World Changers 24-7. Um, it will be located there. So if it's something that you want to share with other people, go right ahead and do that. So um, with all that being done, uh, and, and I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. Dr. Thornton, I want to give the floor to you. I really appreciate you hopping on. Um, I thank you for all the hard work that you've put into this. I know that this issue, all blood sugar issues, that this is something that's been your passion for a long time. It's something that you have, uh, not only devoted a lot of your work to, but I've watched people and watched some of the stories, um, the lives of the stories that you've told where you have completely reversed the direction they were going. They were headed this way and uh, we were able to change the course and, and go an opposite way. So I can't wait to hear some of your stories. I can't wait for you to just kind of pour into this community, right? So it is yours. The floor is yours. Dr. Thornton, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Ryan. Hey guys, it's good to see everybody again. Um, we've got a great turnout tonight, and I hope this information blesses you. Um, and I would just love for you to share with me uh, if if you or somebody close to you in your family has diabetes, uh, would you drop whoever that is in your chat? My mom, my dad, my grandpa, my sister. Uh, and also, if it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes, if you drop that down in the chat, I'd love to see kind of kind of uh, what your experience is with diabetes, either yourself or in your close family would love to know that. Uh, we're going to talk uh, a lot about diabetes. You know, it's something that is is poorly understood. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about just how easy it is really when you, uh, I'm going to break it down into simple terms that I think everybody will be able to comprehend how easy it is to uh, to prevent. Uh, and and actually, it's, it's fairly easy to improve on. And so I'm going to share my screen. And let's see here. I'm going to try anyway. All right, are we good? Oh yeah, awesome, awesome. So of course we have to uh, we have to start with uh, the following information is not intended to replace a professional medical recommendation, only for informational and educational purposes based on preventive medicine. If you have any of the following symptoms, you should consult a licensed healthcare professional for the diagnosis and treatment of any medical condition. Right. So we're going to focus our attention tonight on diabetes. And uh, I just thought this was uh, kind of ironic. Uh, KFC decided it was a good idea uh, with every purchase of a mega jug, a 66 ounce Pepsi, they are gonna donate a dollar to the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. <laughs> Help us find a cure, it says at the bottom, right? <laughs> I can tell you have a good start if we don't drink that 66 ounce Pepsi. How about that? Um, so we have two, type, two main types of diabetes. We have type one, uh, which is more of an autoimmune disease, right? It's the immune system actually attacks uh, cells in the pancreas that secrete insulin. We have type two diabetes, which is lifestyle, 
right? Type one is insulin dependent because the cells can't produce the insulin. Type two is insulin resistance. Our cells aren't paying attention to the insulin, right? So diagnosis usually in type one is early in life. That immune system starts attacking uh, the pancreas pretty at pretty young ages generally. And uh, type two is generally later in life, 40 plus. Now I'm going to argue that that's uh, becoming earlier and earlier. Um, I'm seeing an awful lot of uh, teen adolescent patients that are either pre-diabetic or diabetic, uh, and most of them are overweight. Uh, and it's sad, right? It is tragic that these kids are starting out with diabetes or even pre-diabetes, insulin resistance uh, at 10, 12, you know, teenage years. Um, it's going to be, uh, if they don't turn that around, it's going to be uh, uh, a very difficult adulthood uh, and, and a premature death. Uh, that's generally what we see. So it's uh, uh, one of the leading causes of death, of course, after heart disease, cancer, uh, respiratory diseases, stroke, Alzheimer's, and then here we have diabetes. Uh, just some quick facts. Total here in the U.S., 37 million people have diabetes. That's uh, over 11% of the population. So over one in 10 people here in America have diabetes. Pre-diabetes, we have 96 million people, uh, and that's 38% of the U.S. is pre-diabetic. That's more than one in three. So if we had the uh, Zoom screen back up, right, and you see everybody, you could point at two people and say, one of y'all have pre-diabetes because it's not me, right? That's exactly what it is here, and that is uh, very sad. So projected diabetes rates in the United States, uh, this was a different source that uh, says we're closer to 13%, uh, and by 2030, expected to be up to 50, over 15% here in the U.S. Uh, worldwide, um, it's pretty uh, startling. In the next, from, from 2019 to 2045, these are the increases expected in each of these countries. Uh, so here uh, in North America, we expect a 33% increase over those years. Uh, we have uh, a lot of viewers over in Europe. Um, they're a modest 15% increase over those years. But look at some of these countries. Africa, 143% increase. Um, we have uh, South Central America, 55. Southeast Asia, 74%. Um, Middle East, North Africa, 96% increase over those years. Total cost here in the U.S. Uh, in 2017, at least, was $327 billion uh, for diabetes. So, of course, diabetes not only affects the blood sugar, right, but that high blood sugar impacts the body in, uh, in many tragic ways. In, uh, in the eyes, it affects the blood vessels, right? You probably have seen people that have had uh, uh, cataracts or retinopathy or glaucoma uh, due to uh, how the high blood sugar impacts the eyes. It also impacts the uh, blood vessels in the kidneys, often leading to kidney disease, uh, kidney failure. It affects the nerves. The high blood sugar actually damages the nerves and causes things like neuropathy and, and tingling and pain in those nerves, generally uh, in the lower legs and feet. Uh, it impacts the brain. It also impacts the blood vessels in the brain. Uh, it causes brain inflammation. Of course, that increases risk for uh, TIAs and strokes, cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's, et cetera. Heart, uh, it causes vascular inflammation. Uh, the insulin resistance um, actually causes um, uh, inflammation in the heart itself, in the blood vessels themselves, increasing risk for placking, uh, and again, heart disease, heart attacks, and extremities as well. Peripheral vascular disease, um, PVD, or peripheral artery disease, PAD, where it affects those arteries down in the lower legs and feet, generally reducing circulation. Uh, and uh, can cause uh, wounds that are slow to heal. So these are the most common impacts of uh, diabetes, especially uh, in the rest of the body. Um, Alzheimer's disease is actually called type three diabetes. Um, so, and why that is, is because uh, the high blood sugar, the high insulin uh, causes inflammation in the brain and also those cells just like the rest of the cells in the body become resistant to insulin. And of course, if the cells in the brain are resistant to insulin, that sugar can't get into the brain cells, and guess what happens to the brain cells? They actually die. And so uh, oh. uh, diabetes is strongly connected uh, to development of Alzheimer's disease. 
So I often hear, well, you know, uh, my, my grandpa had diabetes and my dad had diabetes, so I'm probably going to have diabetes. Or, or because I have diabetes now, I have blood sugar problems now is because my grandpa, right, or my family in the past had di diabetes. Well, guys, type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle disease. So I, I like to use the phrase genetics can load the gun, but it's lifestyle that pulls the trigger, right? Just because you might have some of that in your genetics, some of that in your family tree, right? Doesn't mean that, that you're going to have to develop that, okay? It's all about lifestyle. Food choices can either prevent or promote diabetes. So <clears throat> one thing that where, where diabetes starts is insulin resistance, right? Uh, so we have the, the insulin, right, trying to deliver the sugar to the cell, and it says, nope, right? This is what insulin resistance looks like. And so everybody that is that develops diabetes um, at one time was insulin resistant. So just because you're insulin resistant doesn't mean you're going to get diabetes, but every diabetic once was insulin resistant, uh, and that progressed over time. Okay, so what happens is, uh, so insulin has the key, right? Insulin has the key to unlock the cell, to let the sugar out of the bloodstream and into the cells. And then our cells use the glucose to make energy. That's what's supposed to happen. So we consume carbs, we consume sugar, grains, starches, things that rapidly turn into sugar. Our blood sugar raises, right? Our pancreas uh, secretes insulin. Insulin gets the key out, right? And locks the cell, lets that sugar out of the bloodstream and into the cells, tissues, organs, right? That can be used for energy. And that's the process and how it's supposed to work. Now, sometimes we overdrive that system, right? Because we like our carbs, anybody? We like our carbs, our sugars, our starches, our grains. Uh, and we drive that blood sugar mechanism. Blood sugar goes up, insulin is secreted. Blood sugar goes up, insulin secreted, right? So over time, the cells, they see that insulin day in, day out. It's kind of like the boy who cried wolf, right? The cells are like, oh, big deal, more insulin, you know, whoopee. So the cells aren't paying attention to that insulin as much anymore. And so it's not working as efficiently. So the pancreas says, well, maybe I just need to yell a little louder, right? So the pancreas secretes a little bit more insulin, right? And for a while that overcomes that resistance, but only to a point the cell develops even higher levels of resistance, more insulin, higher resistance, right? Till it gets to the point where even though there's tons of insulin in the bloodstream, which isn't a good thing either, right? Tons of insulin in the bloodstream, the blood sugar is still creeping up and creeping up and creeping up and creeping up because the insulin no longer works very well at all, okay? So diabetics, it's not an insulin problem. They've got more insulin in their bloodstream than they've ever had before. Uh, the problem is their cells just aren't listening to it anymore, right? And that's because uh, they are resistant. So insulin resistance is where it all begins. So the different testing, right, for diabetes, to give you just an idea of how things are tested. So we have the A1C test, right, which is the uh, is about a three-month average. They look inside the red blood cell. The red blood cell lives three months. Um, so they look at that, that uh, glucose that's attached to the hemoglobin inside your red blood cell. And from that, they can determine about what your sugar averages over that three-month period of time, right? So uh, diabetes is 6.5 or above. Pre-diabetes is 5.7 to 6.4, okay? Then we have our fasting blood glucose. That's another way to monitor diabetes or pre-diabetes. Um, there's also a glucose tolerance test. Uh, I don't do this one. I think it's kind of barbaric. Basically, they give you a really sugary, super sugary, syrupy drink, right? That's loaded with an incredible amount of sugar. You're supposed to drink this and let's just see what happens, right? <laughs> let's just see how high your blood sugar goes after drinking this. It'd be kind of like drinking that 66 uh, ounce Pepsi we saw earlier and see what happens to your blood sugar. Uh, and so uh, that, uh, uh, I don't recommend that test. Um, we have fasting insulin is a great way to monitor this. Uh, conventional range is two to 19, optimal is two to five. So we, when we're fasting, we shouldn't see a lot of insulin in the bloodstream, right? Uh, so that's a great test to do. Uh, and sadly, it's not done very often. Triglycerides are also a great way. It's part of our lipid profile, right? With our cholesterol and our LDL, we have our triglycerides, which if they're increased is uh, uh, an indicator of blood sugar problems in, in developing uh, insulin resistance. So my favorite tool, right, <laughs> in my tool belt for my patients that are, that are battling diabetes is curcumin. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. 
Curcumin does all of these things for blood sugar problems. It decreases blood glucose and lipid levels. It improves, uh, so the, the cells in the pancreas that secrete the insulin are called beta cells. It improves the beta cell function. It improves liver and kidney function. It decreases lipid peroxidation. <clears throat> and what this is related to is the LDL particles uh, and the inflammatory response in the artery wall that can lead to placking uh, is, is what lipid peroxidation is, and it, and it decreases that. It decreases oxidative stress. It decreases inflammation. Uh, it increases mitochondrial biogenesis. And what that means is, is inside our cell, right, we have the mitochondria. Remember the powerhouse of the cell that makes the energy inside the cell? It, curcumin actually helps your cells make more of those, make more mitochondria. Just out of nothing, there's more mitochondria. And so if we have more mitochondria, we're going to be able to more efficiently use that glucose, right? The mitochondria produces uh, energy or ATP from that glucose. It increases tissue uptake. Uh, the glucose, and it increases insulin sensitivity to the cell. Remember, it all starts with insulin resistance. Curcumin actually makes those cells more sensitive and responsive to that insulin once again. Whoops, going the wrong way. So I'm going to show you some research. There's a ton of research on curcumin uh, for diabetes. Uh, this one here uh, talks about the anti-diabetic activity of curcumin may be due to its potent ability to suppress oxidative stress and inflammation. It shows a beneficial role in the diabetes-induced endothelial dysfunction. And endothelial is that inside of the artery like we talked about just a second ago. Um, it, it, it stops that, uh, that inflammation in that inside of that artery uh, with all, and, and, and decreases all of those vascular and blood vessel uh, complications that we saw earlier, right? With the eyes and the kidneys and the legs, right? Uh, and the brain and the heart. Um, it induces a downregulation of nuclear uh, nuclear factor kappa B or NF, NF kappa B, and that's a, a major uh, inflammatory pathway uh, that drives uh, these diseases. So this is an amazing study right here. What they did is they took two groups of people that were pre-diabetic, okay, uh, and, and then one group was the placebo group. The other group, they gave curcumin, and they followed these groups for nine months, okay. After nine months, they tested this, and in the group, the placebo group, 16.4% went on to develop diabetes within nine months. Guess how many out of the curcumin group went on to develop diabetes in nine months? Zero. Isn't that exciting? And that was the only thing, it was lifestyle change. It was just this group had nothing, this group had curcumin. Uh, curcumin ameliorates autoimmune diabetes. So with, and this was an animal study. Um, let me move uh, some things around on my desktop here. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, autoimmune diabetes, right, is when the immune system attacks the, uh, the pancreas, destroys those beta cells, right, so they can't produce insulin. The curcumin treatment led to significant delays of disease onset, and in some instances, prevented autoimmune diabetes by inhibiting the pancreatic leukocyte infiltration. Basically, they just stopped that autoimmune attack on those beta cells, and it preserved the insulin-expressing cells. Uh, these findings reveal an effective therapeutic uh, effect of curcumin in autoimmune diabetes by its actions on key immune cells responsible for beta cell death. Um, this study says uh, the, the nanocurcumin group had a significant decrease found in A1C, that test we talked about earlier, fasting blood glucose, triglycerides, um, and BMI, which were basically body fat, right? This one here uh, is about neuropathy. So this, uh, uh, oh no, this one is, let me look real quick here. Oh, oh, this one, this one, this one will blow your mind. Uh, this was also an animal study, but what they did is they induced type one diabetes in rats. Okay, so the, the diabetes, the type one diabetes immune system attacked those beta cells in the pancreas, okay, and destroyed those beta cells. And then, they gave those rats curcumin and they followed those rats for 10 months. And when they went back and examined the pancreas, uh, so first they, they showed that there was an absence of the islets of Langerhans. Those are uh, inside, those, uh, inside the pancreas, those cells that secrete insulin. Uh, in five to 10 months from the onset of diabetes, the rat uh, pancreas showed well-developed, larger sized islets. 
So what that means is uh, the, 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 the curcumin actually caused regeneration of these cells. They didn't have the cells. We've never heard of pancreas regenerating itself before. Uh, in these animal models, the, the curcumin fed rats actually regrew cells in their pancreas after they were destroyed by their immune system. And here it says um, anti-diabetic actions and enhanced pancreatic islet regeneration. I can't hardly wrap my mind around how that is even possible. Um, we're excited to see if this also happens in humans, right? What an amazing thing for our type one patients or, or type one people, type one diabetes in our family, where there's 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 having to survive on tons and tons of insulin, right? Because their pancreas can't secrete it anymore. Uh, what if curcumin in this group could could start to regenerate those cells, those insulin producing cells again? Uh, really, really exciting stuff. There's always got to be a catch, right? When we talk about things that are this good, uh, and it's the hidden secret of curcumin is that it's poorly bioavailable. Okay. So when something is bioavailable, it means that you can take it by mouth. It's easily digested, breaks down easily. It easily gets through the intestinal lining and past the liver. Uh, it easily gets into the bloodstream and to our cells, to our tissues where we can use it. Right. Uh, and that's exactly what curcumin isn't. <laughs> curcumin uh, isn't at all bioavailable. Okay. So that is a problem, right? So what percentage of curcumin do you believe is absorbed at the intestinal level? Just look at those answers in your head. What do you think is absorbed at the intestinal level? Sadly, less than 10% absorption at the intestinal level. Okay, uh, this is throughout literature, the problem of curcumin and its bioavailability. Uh, curcumin has been confirmed to exhibit very poor bioavailability with studies showing very low or even undetectable concentrations in the blood and extra intestinal tissues. Major reasons are due to its poor absorption, rapid metabolism, meaning it breaks down quickly, chemical instability, and rapid systemic elimination, right? So it gets through the liver, the liver kicks it out, uh, and now we're excreting it, right, in the urine and feces. That is until now, right? <laughs> That's what we're excited about, is our bio-MS technology that completely uh, disrupts the nutritional industry, completely changes everything we thought we knew about curcumin, uh, and all of this has changed. So this is a multi-patented nanotechnology uh, that came out of Germany, out of the University of Hohenheim. Uh, and they found out how to apply a nanotechnology, which is this red core right here is cur curcumin, a nanoparticle. Um, but the curcumin is not water soluble, meaning it doesn't break down in water. That's a problem when our bloodstream is mostly what? It's mostly water, right? So they apply this micel technology to it as well, which surrounds those nanoparticles of curcumin uh, in, a, in a little shell, right? A little, what I call a little submarine that easily carries that curcumin particle in the bloodstream to the rest of your body, organs, tissues, muscles, brain. Uh, and this is the bio-MS technology, which shows up to 277 times more bioavailable than anything we've seen before. This is exactly what it looks like, this little dropper bottle here. Who has a dropper bottle? <laughs> Raise your hand. Um, so it basically, again, we get the nanotechnology with these tiny particles. We wrap the micelle around that, and it's less than 30 nanometers. How small is that? Well, a nanometer, a, a, a human hair is 50 to 100,000 nanometers wide. A red blood cell is 7,000 nanometers wide. Our particle sizes with this technology are less than 30 nanometers. Uh, that is just unbelievable. So this is just a visual of what these poor scientists have been fighting for years in its curcumin bioavailability, right? This study, uh, they, they did 2,000 milligrams or two grams of curcumin uh, over time, and they followed the levels that they were able to, to detect in the bloodstream, okay? And so uh, you have to look closely because here's the peak, <laughs> there, ta-da, there's the peak of curcumin. After about an hour, we can see right here is, is the elevation of curcumin in the bloodstream. Uh, and look where we're at by two hours, two hours, we, it's gone, okay? Because does that make sense why we say poor bioavailability? Uh, we can't even hardly detect it. And that's a pretty hefty dose, 2000 milligrams. Uh, but two, two hours later, it's gone. And so what I would have to do with patients as I've used curcumin and turmeric for years is I would have to give our poor patients 
pretty good sized handfuls, right, of, of capsules multiple times a day. If it's gone in less than two hours, we're expecting a therapeutic response. We can't just give it once a day, right? Uh, and so that's until now, it's all changed. And these are the levels we're seeing. That was a 2000 milligram dose to achieve that little bitty, <laughs> you can't call it a spike really, but that little elevation slight of, of curcumin in the bloodstream. This is the bloodstream, what we're seeing uh, with this technology. And this is only 33 milligrams, okay? 2000 milligrams, our technology, 33 milligrams. And what's more exciting than this, this peak of curcumin in the bloodstream, which by the way, we've never seen this much curcumin able to get into the bloodstream unless we physically injected it in there, okay? We've never been able to see this through a supplement to get curcumin into the blood and into the tissues at this level. But what's even more exciting, remember the other, uh, we were out by an hour, no, two hours, it was gone. Look at this, four hours, eight hours, 16 hours, 24 hours later, and we still have measurable amounts of curcumin in the bloodstream. Uh, guys, we've never seen anything like this with curcumin or turmeric. Uh, again, like I said earlier, it's changed everything we thought we knew about curcumin and turmeric. Uh, and this is why we're seeing just ridiculous responses in people's health. Um, and here specifically, we're talking about diabetes. I'm going to share just one uh, slide uh, of a patient's results, and then I'm going to share... Uh, I had Dana, she, she's going to come on and share, I think, a little bit about her husband, if she could make it. Um, uh, and it's really about this. It's not about how much curcumin you take, obviously, but how much is absorbed and how long it stays in your bloodstream and organs and tissues, right? This is the patient here, 56-year-old male with diabetes, uh, hyperlipidemia, meaning ex excess lipids, right? Rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease that attacks your joints. Um, look at the, this is a three-month and the only thing we changed was BioMS. Uh, glucose fasting was 142, dropped to 101. Hemoglobin A1C was at a 7.4. Anything above a 6.5 or above is diabetes, right? He was diabetic. 5.6 is not even pre-diabetic anymore. Cholesterol from 286 to 209. Triglycerides 212 down to 125. Um, we'll skip some of this down here to these inflammatory markers. These are two different inflammatory markers, uh, and look how far they dropped in a three-month period of time. So, and this is experience that I see over and over and over again in our patients. Of course, we 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 talk about lifestyle, right? We we don't just say, "Hey, take curcumin and and drink your mega gulp Pepsi," right? <laughs> Have your donut, right? We we've, we've got to make healthier choices. Um, but we've never seen a, a natural substance that, that, that is this powerful at regulating uh, those things in our body. So, all right, I'm going to stop babbling and I'm going to pass the mic back over uh, to Ryan and let me stop my screen share here. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty amazing. <clears throat> Jay, as I'm watching, the, the group had tons of people that Hey, either they were affected or they know someone. I, I'm going to assume each and every one of us have people in our lives that are affected by diabetes. And it's crazy to see the change um, with different lifestyle changes, right? Hey, change the way we eat. It's going to change things. Hey, <laughs> exercise more. It's going to change things. Hey, use our biomass technology. It's going to change things. But here's the thing. There's so many times we get to a point where we're like, I would love to exercise more. I just can't. I don't feel good. I hurt when I actually, I don't have that ability. I would love to eat better, but I struggle to, to make those good choices because of this or that, right? Well, our technology, I was, we watched my blood work change drastically in, in three months. And all we changed was, was uh, the curcumin product. But part of my issue was I couldn't exercise. I had lost that ability because of the pain that was in my feet. And Jay went down this doc, went down this road with me for a year and a half. And this technology allowed me to get that part of my life back where, okay, now I can start to exercise to also help out my blood sugar issues, right? And all those things. So guys, it is, it's a game changer. And I am, I'm forever grateful for my buddy Juan sharing it with me. And I'm forever grateful for Dr. Thornton taking the time just to listen and, and, and try it out and then share it. Right. So th this has been really good. Now, I think you said we have a, a special guest on. Are you there, Jay? Sorry. 
Dana, are you on? I'm here. There you are. Thanks for showing up. So we, we've heard, many of us have heard your testimony, which is powerful, and I wish we had time to hear that again, because I'm just... <laughs> It's, it's mind-blowing. Uh, if you haven't heard her personal testimony, you just got to reach out and, and ask her. But um, I asked her to, to uh, speak about what her husband has noticed. So I asked Jim, like, I was like, Daddy, you want to do this? And he was like, no, I can't do it. I'm too nervous. I was like, okay, whatever. I could talk to anybody. I don't even care. So um, whenever I got my amazing results with the drops, y'all, it was life-changing for me. That's all I could say. And, you know, when you have those kind of transformations, you're sharing it with everybody. Well, my husband has a litany of health issues, like laundry list this big. So um, immediately, of course, when I got the results that I started seeing for my own set of problems, which weren't near as massive as his in the long grand scheme of things, um, I had him to start like two weeks about, I think after I did. Um, and one of his major things, he is a diabetic. Um, and his numbers are always out of control, always have been. He's got heart issues, all, the, all everything. He's got it all. Um, one of the things that he suffered so stinking bad with the diabetic portion of his health issues was the neuropathy. So this is one of the things that we saw immediately. Now, blood work, I've been sharing that. That came in today. Um, he had his six-month blood work, and I'll talk about that in a second, but I kind of want to go in the order of how this transformed my husband's life in that whenever he started the drops, he was in such dire straits with neuropathy. It was so bad, guys, to the point that he was on a list of medications every night when he went to lay down in the bed, that's when it got the worst and his legs and feet would just fire up. He sometimes, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you guys, it was so painful for him. He would get up in the middle of the night because he hadn't slept, try to get in his recliner, try to come back to bed, hang his feet off of the bed. You name it, he was doing it. I've seen the man go 48 hours without sleeping period. They didn't, couldn't give him anything that was going to help him. Of course, they want to shove everything you can imagine at him, which created more side effects, more issues. Um, so yeah, it was so bad guys. And it was to the point that I was actually worried about him who can go continuously every night with two, three or zero hours of sleep. And he was doing that for years y'all. So whenever I got him on the drops, within the first week, I noticed that transition of what was normally, let's lay down in the bed to go to sleep. And then his leg pain would start kicking up. And then I noticed, oh, well, he didn't stir very much. Like after, you know, a week or two in, he didn't stir very much. And he was asleep. Like he made with, you know, an hour, 30 minutes to an hour. And then he was asleep. And I'm like, who are you? You know, well, then it got to where 10 minutes, dude's down. Now he's not suffering from that neuropathy anymore to the level that he was before he has feeling back to his feet. You know, that was one of the things that his feet would literally, you could scratch it with your fingernail and he'd be like, I don't feel that. Now. Well, now he does. He's sleeping like a baby, sometimes too much. I'm like, dude, you got to roll out, you know, like he is sleeping like a baby. So anyway, the neuropathy, unbelievable changes for him. And if you've ever experienced that, I personally have not, but I've watched somebody that I love that I'm telling you about right now, and it, it is painful and miserable. Um, so for that to be taken away from him alone is huge. And if you're suffering from that, you know, you know what that's like and that's all I can say about it. When that got taken away from him, the only thing we could do is count that as like a huge win. But today we got his six month blood work back. Um, so he actually did blood work. He started his drops about mid August. He did blood work just prior to that at the end ish of July. And he went into the, um, I think his A1C at that point was, um, I can't remember what I said, like 7.9 or something like that, Dr. J. 
Um, his A1C was at 7.9 six months ago when he got his blood work. Today we get his blood work and it was 6.4. <laughs> um, yeah, it's dropped to 6.4. Guys, that is huge. So, I, I mean, I'm sure that some of that correlates with the neuropathy. Like, I, I know that it's all intermingled together and overall his health in general. Um, he's lost weight. He's down to like, um, I don't know how much weight he's lost, but um, not that he was extremely overweight or anything, but his health, his activity, that's all changed for him. Um, so um, he's dropped poundage. And then also not related to diabetes. Um, well, Dr. J said his numbers for his cholesterol because he has heart and all that. Well, we were super excited to see that. Um, I think I said he was like at 170 something on his cholesterol the last time he had his cholesterol done. And this time it was 138. Dramatic, dramatic drop. And all of these things, I'm pretty sure that that statin that he takes for his cholesterol also amplifies the leg issues. Um, so that's something that we're going to get to visit with his doctor about, hey, these numbers look amazing. And she did tell him whenever he got this blood work that he could consider removing some of his insulin dose that he's taken or some of his dosage that he's taken and try that and see if he can cut that down. So that's amazing for us because any medication that he can walk away from, that's a huge win. Um, the cholesterol thing is something that we're going to try to visit as well. Um, just because like I said, we just got to look at these today. So that's my report. Like when I tell you this curcumin is life-changing, it's life-changing for me, life-changing for my husband. I don't have to see him in misery. Hi, Sue. I just see Sue and I love you, girl. <laughs> I miss you so much. But anyway, um, life-changing, y'all. Life-changing. And when you can go from sleeping none to sleeping like a baby, not having that pain, misery, and your blood work show the proof is in the pudding, that's the story right there. That's the story. Get your story. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dana, so much. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. It's really cool just to see story after story like that and, and to know that he's got a part of his life back that he thought he lost. You know, you get to a point, honestly, and if if you don't, then maybe I'm different, but you get to a point where you're like, well, I'm just going to have to live with this. This is going to be my life from now on. And to get parts of those life that of your life back and go, oh, <laughs> now I can do this, you know, and, and, and I can do this again. And then you realize like, how many things that you were missing out on and you're like oh wow like just with my foot pain I was at the point where I, I wasn't walking at all I just hated it and uh then it, I get to feeling better I'm like oh we go for walks with my kids um I'm actually on the field now with you know like there's things that you're like I didn't realize I was taking those for granted like I was because I lost them for a year and a half and now I have them back it's just super cool so uh, I don't want to talk anymore. I did tell you guys we would take some time for some Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, you can just unmute yourself, ask the question, or you can type it in the chat. Um, I've been watching the chat. haven't seen any questions come through. Um, so we'll do a little bit of that. And then if there are no questions, we'll wrap it up. Jay, it's looking like you knocked it out of the park. Awesome. Well, what I encourage everybody to do is um, uh, we'll get the recording uh, placed in the group. If you're not part of our uh, amazing uh, health and wellness group, uh, make sure you ask for an invite. You've got to get in there to see all of these things, right? All of these uh, amazing uh, health changes. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Ryan will help get that uh, get this posted. Um, and, and I'm sure there's somebody in your life that needs to hear about this. Right. Well, and that's that's that was my question is, we, I definitely have a, a sister-in-law and a brother-in-law that I want to see this recording. We'll make it happen. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, I'll have the recording posted in Disruptive Wellness, um, hopefully by the end of the night, and then I'll have it uploaded to YouTube um, to where you can share the link if they're not on Facebook. Right. So you should be good to go. Um, I appreciate everyone hopping on. Uh, this is the third Thursday of the month.
right? And so we will come back. We'll have our next weekly drop on the first Thursday in February. Um, you would think I would know the date on that, but if you know me very well, I'll never know the date. I don't even know what today is. Um, so let me pull that up real quick. The second, the second of February will be our next weekly drop and uh, look forward to getting together and um, we'll see kind of what direction we go. I know one, one time a month, we will pick a health issue and we will focus on it and how curcumin affects that. So, all right, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. You guys have a wonderful evening and we will see you next time. Bye guys.